Hi guys, my name is Emily Lane and I'm the Fastly Nurse Practitioner. Today our disease of the day is going to be shingles. So let's start off with what is shingles. Shingles is basically chicken pox that has lied dormant in the body and some sort of stressor or trigger has made it come out. And what it comes out as is this rash or blister on the body. Um, it typically starts off with um, tingling sensation or pain. And then three or four days later, the, the rash itself comes out on top. Other features of the rash is that you'll see it in exactly one area of the body, usually in a line, okay, that's called sosteriform. Um, so that's, it's lying over a dermatome, meaning that it's only in one nerve, okay? So you need to be familiar with dermatomes, and you need to look at the ones specifically for the head and face, because they're different. They're not like what you think of on the back. When you see it on the back, it's like almost following a rib. It's exactly in this nice swoosh, this nice line. But the dermatomes on the head and face are a little bit different, and that can... Uh, confuse people like you can have shingles on the back of the neck and it's all the way across the neck because there's a dermatome that runs all the way across the back of the neck right at the, the baseline of the hair I've seen that before um, and it is shingles so again the rash it can show up I mean 14 days after the burning or tingling but usually it's just mm, a few um, the other thing is that the the rash that's going to last for about seven days when the patient presents they're usually in a lot of pain at that point um, and they'll have their lesions are in multiple stages of healing so you'll have some that are new, some that are open, some that are crusted and healing so you'll see different um, types um, all within that zestiriform line there for the patient. So who's at risk for getting shingles? Basically people over the age of 50, anyone with a severe immunodeficiency, someone under a lot of stress, um, those situations can cause it. Sometimes it'll be another illness, so someone will get the flu or a virus, and it puts their body kind of at a low, and boom, here comes the shingles. So what can we do for shingles? Not too much. They've done a lot of studies, and there's not too much out there that we can do. There are a couple of things that we can try, so let's go over those. So one of the first things that we can prescribe are antivirals. So you can start with famcyclovir. You can do that one, 500 milligrams every eight hours for seven days. Valcyclovir, 1,000 milligrams every eight hours for seven days. Those two are your best options. Um, your secondary option is acyclovir, but you have to give that five times a day for seven to 10 days. So compliance is a little bit more difficult on acyclovir. You also have to start it within 48 to 72 hours of onset of the rash, so we have to make sure uh, to catch it fast enough and really encourage the patient to start it then. Um, if there's any eye involvement, you need to start one of the antivirals and refer them to an ophthalmologist who may do one of several things. They may do some IV medication if they find it ne necessary for something like retinitis. Um, there's also topical things that they may do as well, but the biggest takeaway is if there is any eye involvement and it's in that dermatome or it's on the face, tip of the nose, in that area, you need to refer them to an ophthalmologist, okay? Um, and also, if they have post-herpetic neuralgia, if it's a more of a mild pain, it can be treated with something like NSAIDs, acetaminophen, or um, topical capsaicin. If it's more moderate to severe, uh, stronger pain medication and narcotics can be considered at that point, something like tramadol, oxycodone. Um, if they don't respond to one of those medications, you can try amitriptyline, gabapentin, Lyrica, and those are kind of the options that we have to help the patient with either um, getting through it, making it shorter in duration, or dealing with some of the aftermath at that point. And how can we prevent the shingles um, uh, for occurring? Well, of course, right now we're offering the Shingrix vaccine, which is a two-part series. First one is done and then two to six months later they get the second part of the Shingrix vaccine. Uh, one major takeaway for that is that um, patients can start getting that when they turn 50. I recommend that they get it sooner rather than later and especially those patients that I have right now that are in their early 60s, I'm really recommending that they go ahead and get it because for some reason Medicare is not really wanting to cover or pay for the Shingrix vaccine. Um, it is different than the, uh, the vaccine that a lot of people that are 65 and older got. They got a single dose shingles vaccine, um, but the Shingrix vaccine came out in 2017, so it's a little bit different. It is a two-part one. So um, another thing is, yes, you can revaccinate those people if they got the one dose shingles vaccine. They can get the two dose Shingrix vaccine now. That's fine. And um, they just may have to pay out of pocket for it because, again, Medicare doesn't want to pay for it for some reason. Um, 
So I've been, again, I've been pushing my 50 to 60 floors to go ahead and get it while they have some other type of insurance that will cover it as part of their preventative and maintenance type thing. Another thing I get asked a lot by patients is, oh my goodness, can I give my husband or wife shingles? Because I have shingles. No, but you can give somebody chicken pox. So if I had an outbreak of shingles and my, let's say my baby hadn't been vaccinated against chicken pox yet, I could give them chicken pox from my shingles. So one thing that we recommend is that they don't go around their grandchildren if they haven't completed their chicken pox vaccine series because uh, they could transfer it that to that way. Also, sometimes their partner, um, if they didn't get the chicken pox vaccine when they were younger um, and they never got the chicken pox somehow, they could give their partner chicken pox or whoever they're around or living with, etc. So, no, you can't give somebody shingles, but you can give them chicken pox if they've never had it and weren't vaccinated. All right, and that wraps up our Disease of the Day episode. Um, comment below. If you have any questions, I'll try to get back to you. Like and subscribe to my channel, and check me out on Facebook. I am the Fast Laners Practitioner. Thank you. Bye.